its admission. It was shocking, also given the timing, coming off that blowout win a couple nights ago. Yeah, Bob, I, I think there are a couple of things you, have, you think about, right? It was definitely a surprise, I think, for just about everybody um, who was on the outside. And I'm not privy to the inside internal conversations both Kenny and, and uh, Sean have had, so it's unfair for me to comment on what those discussions were all about. But with, you know, 20 games left, you don't see that happen all that much. But one thing I will tell you is that obviously they've parted ways. Um, I think you'll continue to see Sean Marks do a great job in terms of building the culture of this organization in terms of going forward, depending on how they tweak that, how they change that, that remains to be seen. I think on the other side, though, with Kenny Atkinson, I think everybody respected him as a coach. I think he's done a great job with the organization in terms of developing players, getting them to the playoffs, just getting everybody to like him and buy in. And I know that Kenny Atkinson will do very, very well wherever his path takes him next. All right, for more on the Nets parting with Atkinson, let's head right out to Brooklyn now, the courtside report with Michael Grady. And Michael, what is the vibe out there? A lot has changed in the last 24 hours. Well, a lot of folks are still processing, Bob. This came as a shock to a lot of people. I think a lot of folks woke up on Saturday morning, and the last thing that they were expecting, including myself, was to find out that the Nets and Kenny Atkinson had mutually agreed to part ways less than 24 hours after a dominant performance against the San Antonio Spurs. Look, there are a lot of question marks and a lot of speculation once the big names were added to the roster and what's going to be the long-term plans. The timing of it really threw a lot of people off especially in a season with so many injuries, not having Kevin Durant out there on the court. So at the press conference yesterday with Sean Marks, one of my first questions was the timing. Why was now the right time to make this move? I think there was a couple of reasons. I think it was probably fair for both sides. I think it's fair for Kenny. Um, you know, if this is where we were all thinking, um, it's, you know, let him have an opportunity to seek um, somewhere else, you know, future employment and so forth. But also it, it gives the Nets an opportunity to um, um, to look at, you know, Jacques Vaughn will obviously uh, take over uh, as head coach and, and let's look at this group and see how and evaluate this group as well. Now, one of the things Sean Mark said was that, again, a new voice was needed in the locker room, and he felt, and he said Kenny Atkinson also acknowledged that Kenny's voice wasn't holding as much weight in the locker room that it used to. And one of the questions I was asking the guys, including Jock Vaughn yesterday, in the last few years under Kenny Atkinson, there have been highs and there have been lows. And one of the things that I asked was, how have the lows this season felt differently than what they did in previous seasons? I got different answers from the guys. Coach Jock Vaughn said that he felt resiliency was something that they were able to rely on in past years, but they really couldn't say that as much this season. The team didn't respond well after losses. The Memphis loss, notwithstanding, following that up with a strong performance against San Antonio. And you really look at the past week or so. It was a game. We recall the game against Orlando, a big matchup, an opportunity to create some distance between the Nets and the Magic in the Eastern Conference standings. The Nets lose that game. The next game is against Washington, a Washington team trying to get into the playoff picture. In D.C., the Nets lose that game. They follow that up with a matchup in Atlanta. The Nets should beat Atlanta. Worst record in the Eastern Conference. They give up 141 points to the Hawks. Very next game they lose to Miami. The Boston game, the Nets, the Celtics are playing without Jason Tatum and they were beating the brakes off of the Nets for a good portion of that game and it took a 51 point performance from Karis LeVert to stun the Celtics in Boston. Great win. You want to carry that momentum into the next matchup with the Grizzlies and you give up 140 points to the Grizzlies. That goes to the point of Coach Jock Vaughn saying Brazilian see is something that they didn't really hang their hat on this season. The team really wasn't responding well after tough losses. It may have contributed to the decision uh, and, and, and why they said that the voice wasn't holding as much weight in that locker room, but it was certainly something disappointing for this team this season, the way they responded to tough games, Bob. Yeah, and Grady, for everybody, and certainly I imagine in talking to the players, they're reminded that ultimately when things like this happen, it's a business and sometimes when it's somebody you like as much as Kenny Atkinson, it kind of hits you in the face, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a harsh reality, and you're 100% right, Bob. Guys will say, look, I understand it's a business. They can say that a thousand times, but the truth is, especially for the guys that have been here for a long time and have seen their careers blossom in the last few years under Coach Kenny Atkinson and this coach and the staff, yes, it's a business, but there's a human element, too, where, like you said, it really hits you in the face. You think about the way Spencer Dinwiddie has blossomed in these last few years under this coach and staff, this developmental team. Joe Harris, what's happened with him. Jared Allen, what's happened with him. A number of guys. 
Karis LeVert included, have literally seen their games go to an entirely different level under Coach Kenny Atkinson. It hit them hard, and that's something I asked them about to get their reaction to the news that Kenny Atkinson and the Nets have mutually agreed to part ways. Obviously, it's tough. This is the first time I've ever been through something like this before. Um, and any, anybody that knows me knows that me and Kenny were extremely close. You know, he uh, he's huge for my development um, on and off the court, really. You know, from day one, we were we were together. So um, obviously it hurts, you know, but it's part of the business. Um, it's part of the business sucks, but uh, it is what it is. I think Kenny's admired for his work ethic and commitment to player development. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that's changed at all. Um, She's done a great job in, in getting us to this point. And, um, you know, we have our work cut out for us uh, going forward. You're definitely shocked, surprised. Um, I think, uh, you know, for the guys that have been here for the last few years with him, you know, you're upset. You learned a lot. There's, uh, But there's also, you know, it's one of those things where you're just, you know, grateful for the time, the opportunity that you had with him. You know, we all loved playing for Kenny. Um, grew a lot as players and as people and, um, you know, a valuable experience but it's one of those things where the NBA at the end of the day you know it is a business and you know stuff like this happens with teammates coaches you know and uh, it's tough and it's tough to see but it is the nature uh, of the NBA itself I asked coach Jacques Vaughn a little bit earlier how his experience as a former player influenced how he communicated with his players with this transition again a short turnaround the news yesterday and then playing a three o'clock game today against the Chicago Bulls and he said he really looked at the emotional side of this he understands that guys who have been with Kenny Atkinson a little bit longer or maybe handling it a little bit differently than guys who are in their first year with the Brooklyn Nets or haven't spent as much time with coach Kenny Atkinson so he really wanted to encourage the guys to handle this situation to process everything in their own way. He had individual meetings with each player yesterday, had conversation with them, building that trust, having an open environment for honesty, transparency, really important for him. Asking guys, what do they like? What haven't they liked over the course of this season? Really trying to get their input and make sure that there is open communication between the two sides. There's not a lot that he can implement in a short amount of time. One of the things that he will do is alter the starting lineup, Bob. DeAndre Jordan is going to be inserted into the starting lineup. Wilson Chandler will once again start ahead of Torian Prince, but Jared Allen goes to the bench. DeAndre Jordan is going to start for the fifth time this season. He will also, Jock Vaughn, add some tweaks on the defensive side of the ball. Not as much time to tweak things on the offensive side outside of some drawn-up plays out of timeout. So, short turnaround. Everybody's processing. Coach Vaughn said the one commonality is that we get to play a game today. This is the guy's passion. This is what they love, and he expects them to play hard and to compete today against the Chicago Bulls. All right. We'll look forward to that, Michael. We'll look forward to seeing you again.